So here we are inside the uh, 2016 X1 with these IBC Byte videos that we're doing, just these quick uh, insights into the new features. Here we're going to be looking at the GPU uh, real-time debayering, um, the media reactor and the changes that we've made inside there, and also the new proxy workflow. Um, I was really going to start in this window, just the new create new project window, just to show you uh, how the proxy settings have changed uh, in here now. You have proxies uh, set in here by default. Um, which basically give you the option to have a half res, quarter res, or an eighth res. Uh, the only other thing you really need to take into account is if you want to use conditional proxies, uh, what size uh, the condition is going to be set at, and obviously you turn it on with this uh, this button up here. Uh, as it as it stands, uh, really the the system or this particular project won't create proxies unless I actually tell it to. Um, and this is kind of the point that uh, you no longer have to have proxies on or proxies off. Uh, you can literally make them on the fly. Um, or uh, just use the on-screen decimation. So, I'm going to cancel out there. We're going to just quickly jump into here, and I'm going to go through a bunch of things. Um, mainly where we're going to start is with uh, the new uh, media reactor uh, and the capabilities that we've brought to this uh, version 2016 extension 1. Inside the media hub here, uh, if we actually go and start searching for things, so in here I've got some uh, some bits and pieces that I can use to uh, to sort of go and find uh, media. So uh, I'm just going to go into here, jump to the media, and we're going to go into DNG here. So uh, for those of you au fait with the flame world, DNG, um, Magic Lantern, Phantom, uh, and various others are now uh, incorporated into the system via uh, a thing called Media Reactor, which is uh, an external third party plugin made by a company called Drastic Technology. Uh, we're very happy to have it inside of the system uh, as of X1. Uh, what it allows us is a whole bunch of things that we couldn't do before. So uh, if I come into here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop some of these clips onto uh, the desktop and I'll show you a bunch of a bunch of bits and pieces. So if we take uh, a few of these, I'll just take these three clips at the moment, uh, drop them on the reels. Uh, and what you can see is in here, these now arrive, uh, arrive as DNG. Okay, so this is actually looking at the DNG uh, raw. Uh, at any point, you can come in and you can sort of, uh, you can have a look at all the metadata that resides there. And back in here, if you want to have a look at the sort of uh, the extra metadata that's internal, obviously over here, you can see this is uh, raw DNG. So there's a bunch of things we can do with that. You can see down here I have the options then to get into things like the metadata and stuff like that. But fundamentally, what it's going to allow me to do is to sort of play this back. Now there's a couple of things we might notice here. Um, this is 2K. Uh, obviously it's soft imported and what you'll see is that playback is going to be a bit stuttery. Now that's fair enough because the uh, Media Reactor plugin works on the CPU and not the GPU. So there's a couple of things uh, that uh, I can do to get around this. And this is one of the reasons that we wanted to show you in this particular way. Is that up here in the media, you can see see that if I wanted to now I can just generate source proxies for this. So you can see straight away it goes to a pending render. Now what's nice is actually the full res, as you can see specified here, will always still be available to me. If I switch this out to the proxy, you see that the uh, thing goes orange around here. And actually, uh, because it's so quick, it's managed to get to the uh, uh, to actually render the proxy before I could even get to it. But you can see here, if I get to the M1 quickly enough, uh, yeah, there you go. Right, so you can actually see that the proxy is being built on the fly as we do all this, and that's actually being done via backburner uh, in the background down here. And if I just uh, do this, you can see that basically what's going on in here is that actually we've got a couple of jobs that are being sort of uh, forced through, uh, and one of them is this proxy uh, generation. So what that means is that I don't ever really have to decide if I want proxies for a clip or if I don't. Uh, the great thing about this is that this is now soft imported DNG with its own proxy uh, and therefore I can utilize that uh, and what that does is now it will allow me to play this back in real time okay and as we were saying very easily I can switch back to the full resolution and I won't quite get real time playback because of its going through this plugin but fundamentally the proxy will give me a way of actually working with this in real time even in soft import. So that's really smart, okay, and it kind of shows us a couple of ways that we can use both the proxy workflow and this new Media Reactor plugin. Now, the Media Reactor plugin does a couple of other things as well, and in this example, it actually gives us access to uh, something we never really had access to before, and that's Phantom. So if I come into here, you can see if I come out of the proxy and I swipe off the bottom here, this is uh, 4K Phantom. Um, you can see here this is 46%, and actually this will play back in real time which is very exciting okay so this again is just uh, much a part of this uh, media reactor um, 
uh, sort of plugin that we're using. This is actually this particular 4K stuff is is cached local, but it still has access to the original media file out on the system via the plugin. So this is very cool. So a couple of other things that are just worth having a look at. If we just uh, come out of here. Um, like we said, uh, these uh, these are the .cine files, these are the Phantom, this up here is the DNG. Um, what's really kind of cool is there's a couple of new things that this will obviously uh, need. Uh, one of them is the ability to actually come down to here and actually flush the proxies. So I can have proxies on a per clip basis. I might decide that this one I don't actually want proxies on anymore, but I do want to keep it on these two. If we actually switch out of here, what we'll see is actually if we look at our desktop now, we have uh, in here um, both the resolution of the clip, so we can see there's the 4K Phantom, is the 2K uh, DNG, and here is the proxy resolution, uh, that's the one that I've just flushed, and you can see it no longer exists, and those are the two that still reside. So we can always check on the proxy resolution uh, and whether it is applied. So that's really quite nice too. Couple last things in there is um, is also the fact that if you ever know, want to know if there's anything on the clip in terms of proxies, you can always come into here and it will actually display both the, the, the original resolution and the proxy resolution. The same is also true for batch. So if we decided we wanted to use uh, some of these, we could actually come into here, go to uh, here, and maybe use our, our sort of uh, desktop. I'll demo desktop up here. Um, and actually, if I just come into here for a second, I'm going to add a new schematic reel. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to grab these clips and I'm going to stick them into batch. Okay, so when we come into batch here, we just grab these clips down for the moment. We're going to use them uh, in here. Okay, so let's just put that up there for a moment, like so. So you can see these are the DNGs we were just using. Uh, if we go to the timing view down here, again, we have the option to. Uh, to always look at the resolution and again it will show us the proxy if there was a proxy attached but also what's really nice here is a bunch of other things in terms of the rendering so you can see at the moment um, I haven't really done anything to any of these so you tried, tried and tested old uh, color correction gag so we know that this one at the top here has a proxy on it we can work in either the proxy workflow with control P or we can just turn that off and actually work with the full res so again it really depends on if you uh, if you're worried about your interaction or anything like that but you should find here you know interaction of all this is good as gold uh, we'll just uh, let's make it look a little bit a little bit more filmic so something like that you can see what we've changed and now what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna come to the bottom here and I'm just gonna render this out okay now what you'll notice here is when I go to render it will kick straight off and render However, what I can also do with this is if we actually work in the proxy view and I do that, it will actually give me a warning because this is actually telling me that I'm working in what we call the working resolution. Okay. Now, what is what's going on there is that this thing here is what my working resolution. This will define what is being rendered. If I'm in proxy mode, it will render a proxy. If I, however, turn it to full resolution, it will always render the full res. So you have both options. So this is very smart. It just allows you to have the option to render a proxy. One last thing is really just to also look at the uh, the way that the, the the sort of viewer or the player actually decimates on the fly. Uh, and again, we're just going to use that in here. Uh, you can see that this is basically a uh, uh, the phantom stuff. Okay. Uh, and again, this is 4K, so it's uh, it's pretty high res. Uh, if I just come down here for a second, I'm just going to turn the uh, the play reel off. And again, you know, this is cache local, but you know, it might give us some problems uh, if it was um, coming. Uh, Coming via the uh, coming via a disk or something like that. So what's really nice here is actually the uh, the system now handles uh, the decimation of the proxies on the fly. So this clip doesn't have a proxy attached to it, uh, but that doesn't mean that I can't turn it into proxy mode. Okay, and what that will do is the system is now uh, capable of actually creating a proxy on the fly. And if you can see, I don't know if it will come across in the video, but actually uh, here I'm actually now looking at the proxy, which because we have it set at half for the project is a half res proxy. If I go back to full resolution, it kicks back in. So if we look at something maybe back here that's a little bit more defined, uh, you see it goes very soft and back to the full resolution. So what it will always do is give me the ability to work much faster in the proxy mode I don't need full resolution necessarily. The other thing we also have in here is proxy on scrub, which for those of you that are very bright will be able to work out if I scrub it, it creates a down res decimated proxy. As soon as I up pen, it goes back to the full res. So we have the best of both worlds. So back on the desktop, um, I now just want to have a quick look at the real time uh, GPU debayering. So um, obviously there's a lot of work being done around the world on 
various ARRI raw formats and uh, R3D and the like. Um, and what we've introduced with extension one is the ability to now debayer that off the graphics card via the GPU in real time. So what that means is that if I come into here, and again we just go and find some media, and here I'm going to I'm going to grab some uh, some ARRI stuff for the moment. Uh, if we go to the bottom here, we've got a bunch of files. So if I just open these up, so you'll see straight away that um, if I grab one of these, we use this first one here, um, and you can see over here this is uh, three and a half K, so it's you know UHD. Um, and you see you've got all the kind of Alexa raw information so this is all in there uh, we can do a whole bunch of things right so again if we come down to the bottom here you've got the ARRI raw we can go through we can look at the resolution stuff uh, we also have up access to the debayering options and to some of the color information so this is kind of cool this is really just on input uh, we also have the option we talked about before of generating proxies for this media on import okay now that's again it's a really smart thing if we decide that actually this is uh, an, an image or a clip that's going to need that kind of down res capability as we work through it we can actually generate those on the fly as we bring it in but for the moment we don't need to do that um, and we're just going to use this uh, on the desktop like so so come out here you'll see if i switch to this this is a 4k clip uh, and what you'll notice is if i come into here i play it back that is playing uh, just under 4k three and a half k real time so the debayer is being done on the fly off the gpu so this is our reroll um what's nice about this if i just zoom it back a bit uh, and we come up here i can actually uh, turn on uh, a lookup table and play around with the exposure so you see we've lost a bit of data in the sky there but if i actually come in and like knock it down a bit and do the same with the uh, with the contrast you can see that i can kind of flatten that out a little bit very quickly and actually we just carry on playing that back now that's if we do it with ARRI uh, we can also do the same uh, with red so R3D so if we come into here here's an R3D clip this one actually is at the moment you can see it's a quarter debayer in there but if I come in and we go into uh, into here and we grab the R3D options if uh, I want to just have a look at the debayer you can see it's on quarter I'm actually going to push it up to full and you'll see over here that that is a is a 3k, a 3K clip so what happens drag that in drop it into here and now if we start playing around with that so again you'll see if I just load that up into here again I'll turn these off and reset the options but you'll get a real-time uh, debayering of that information it might look slow but that's because it's shot like that this is actually if you swipe down you can see that that is playing in real time for everyone to see